It's no secret that I do a lot of running. I'm running most days. Mileage may not be as high as it once was. Currently, I'm hovering around about the 80 kilometer a week mark. So that's about 40 kilometers less than a few years ago. You'd think that I would wear through shoes at a fairly quick rate. And I was only thinking the other day that I haven't bought any new shoes in 2024. In fact, it's been well over six months and I reckon that's the longest period I have gone without buying new shoes. So how am I getting by? It does help to have a number of shoes in your shoe rotation. I have 10 at the moment. We all know the cost of living is skyrocketing, food, utilities, petrol, mortgages, etc. So if you are like me, you wanna save a dollar wherever you can. And I guess, Everything that was old is new again. I rarely buy new shoes. I'm always looking to bag a bargain with older models, and it's these older models that have come to my rescue over the past six months. Actually, there are some shoes in my current rotation that I bought over two years ago. So in this video, I'm going to go through my current shoe rotation, what shoes I am using for particular runs, the mileage on these shoes, the wear and tear, good or bad, and the all important comfort factor. And if you are prepared to let your fingers do the work online, you can pick up some of these shoes at a fraction of what's being charged for the newer current models. I've broken the shoes into four categories, easy, recovery, steady, long run, speed sessions, and race day. Let's go. All right, let's kick things off with the recovery, easy, steady day shoes. We've got the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel version three. We've got the Saucony Kinvara 14. We've got the Saucony Ride 16. We've got the Saucony Endorphin Speed 2. And we've got the Adidas Boston 11. Told you they were older shoes. Let's start with the Rebels from New Balance, the version threes. This is one of my all time favorite shoes. I've said it many times here on the channel. Uh, I just love running in this shoe. It's a real surprise pack. It's a real party type shoe because even though it's got this real squishy midsole, it does have a lot of responsiveness to it. It's much, much more than just an easy run shoe. You can certainly pick up the pace. And I have done sessions in this shoe in the past. Now I just use it as my recovery day shoe. I'm at 560 kilometers, a lot more to come. That outsole, yeah, it's showing a little bit of wear and tear, but uh, it's not too bad. Midsole is really, really still good. There's not even a lot of creases in that midsole. The upper, yeah, it's a bit grubby and stuff, guys, but, um, yeah, look, it's it's holding up really well considering the amount of mileage it has done. This is a shoe that's still available. Version fours are out, but uh, you can pick this shoe up online at the moment for $150. It's just such a comfortable shoe to run in. And um, yeah, I've had all three versions so far, so a brilliant, brilliant shoe. Next is the, uh, the Kinvara 14s from Saucony. Just noticed the other day that this shoe's starting to get a little bit of wear and tear on that outsole. Where are we? Three, almost 350 kilometers. No creasing in that midsole yet. The upper's looking pretty good. I don't know if you can see, I did mention this once before, that there is a hole. It's a very, very light engineered mesh, very breathable upper, but they've got this, it's like a fabric that sits underneath the mesh here. And I've actually got my big toe starting to poke a hole through that. That's on both feet. That's the only issue I have had with the Kinvara 14s. I love this shoe. My first introduction to the Kinvaras was the 13s and I absolutely caned that shoe, loved it. Um, having such a good time also running in the 14s. I use it for the easy runs. You know, I'm pretty sure that I could use this if I wanted to run a tempo or something like that. Next in line is the Saucony Ride 16s. This shoe has been a surprise packet to me. I paid only 90 bucks for it late last year and I really enjoy running in this shoe. A little bit firmer than the Kinvaras, but that's okay. Use this shoe for easy runs. Almost 300 kilometers in this shoe. I forgot to mention too that the Kinvaras 14s you can pick up for about 120 or 130 bucks online at the moment. The rides, the outsole, you know, not showing any wear and tear at all. Midsole, no creasing, and the upper is still well, it's, it's wearing really nicely. Not as comfortable for me as the Kinvara 14s, but it's just a perfect shoe for an easy run. I have taken it to about 20 kilometers, I think, so it does sort of fit into a bit of a longer run category as well. 
One of my old favourites is the Saucony Endorphin Speed 2s, 812 kilometres on this shoe and still going strong. I've been using this at Park Run for the last couple of weeks because I hadn't run in it for quite a few months, but uh, really have enjoyed just picking the shoe up and running in it again. Outsole, still looking pretty good considering there's over 800 clicks on it. Midsole, still nice and cushiony in there. It hasn't broken down at all. Uh, upper, it's well, it's grubby, but you would expect that after 800 kilometres. Just a really nice, comfortable shoe. This was my second pair, my other pair. I think I've still got uh, sitting in the cupboard with about 600 kilometres on them, but I haven't used them for quite some time. But they were, are still good enough to just pick up and, and go for a run in. As I said, at the moment, only using them for park run, but in the past, I have done speed sessions. And finally, in this category, is the Adidas Boston 11s. Uh, this is a shoe that I have really struggled to like early on, but it has grown on me uh, over time. I'm at about 160 kilometres in the shoe now. That outsole showing no wear and tear. Midsole still looking really good and the upper not showing any signs of wear and tear. I predominantly use this now for steady runs. I did do a tempo in it uh, last week, but it fits nicely in that category for steady runs. This shoe is still readily available online if you go looking. Um, I haven't got it written down there how much it is, but I will find it and put it up here on screen. Alrighty, the next category is long run shoes, and I've really only been using two over the last couple of months, the Asics Nova Blast 3 and the Saucony Triumph 21. Unfortunately, I've had to retire the Nova Blast 3. Uh, the last time I ran in this shoe, I just, just developed some sore knees afterwards, and that outsole, I did feel rocks that I was running over, starting to push through. It was time to retire the Nova Blast. I think I ended up with about 780K on the shoe. I've loved the Nova Blast from the word go. I've had all three iterations of it. I know the fours are out and they look really good as well, but you can pick up the threes at a good competitive price at the moment. That outsole after 780k, yeah, it's showing a fair bit of wear and tear on there. Midsole as well, still looks pretty good uh, considering the mileage on it. The upper's quite grubby, but it's still held together really well. Comfortable shoe, always plenty of padding around the heel. Long runs work really well for me in this shoe. I have done some up-tempo stuff as well, but for me, it really does suit as a long run shoe. The Saucony Triumph 21, uh, yeah, I have loved this shoe for my long runs. Where is it there? I've got 550K in this shoe now, and there's still a lot more to come. Nothing really to even worry about on the outsole there. Midsole is still holding together really well, and the upper is, uh, yeah, no signs of wear and tear. This is my go-to long run shoe now. It's uh, comfortable, plenty of support and padding around the heel area, nice, thickness there to the tongue. Um, yeah, great, great shoe. And you can certainly pick this up for a good price at the moment online. What have I got there? Yeah, sort of around about the $180 mark. So that's pretty good value. And going back to the Nova Blast, uh, somewhere between $150 and $175 online at the moment. All right, now we're starting to get into some faster shoes. And the two that I've been using for my speed sessions are the Asics Magic Speed version one and also the Brooks Hyperion Tempo. Uh, let's start with the Magic Speed version one because I have had this shoe for over two years. Uh, it was a shoe that I used a little bit early on and then I developed some Achilles issues after a particular run in this shoe. I think it was about an 18 kilometer run. So it sort of sat in the cupboard for probably 18 months or so and I've dragged it out again late last year and started using it for uh, the shorter speed sessions. And actually today I ran a progressive in this shoe and it's a shoe that I have come to like over time. We are at 280 kilometers. You know, the outsole still looking really good. Midsole, I'm not seeing any creasing and the upper is still well and truly looking like it just came out of the box. Not quite as much padding around the heel counter as some of the other shoes that I do have from ASICS, but this has been a pretty good shoe to me in those speed sessions in, over the past couple of months. 
I now actually really like running in this shoe. It took some searching to try and find if this shoe was still available, but it did come up as around about $150, but it's on sites like Kogan and eBay. I don't know if you're like me guys, I'm just sort of a little bit wary of buying running shoes from those sites. Uh, you just don't know whether you're getting the Ridgy Dig models or not. The Brooks Hyperion Tempo, uh, this was a shoe I picked up on special late last year as well. I really like this shoe. It's comfortable, it's lightweight. We are at 155K. The outsole looks really good still. The midsole is really nice. I actually like this midsole. Uh, the upper, not a blemish in there. Yeah, at the moment you can pick this shoe up for $170. It's good value. This is a shoe I have used for speed sessions. I've run a couple of park runs. Fits really nicely for my Tuesday speed group that I go and run with. And I just find that it works really well over those shorter distances. Okay, finally, we are up to the race day shoes that I have been using this year in summer. What have I done? I've done uh, three races, I think, this year. Two in the ASICS Metaspeed Sky Plus, and I did a half marathon in the New Balance Fuel Cell RC Elite 2s. Let's start with the ASICS Metaspeed Sky Plus. Uh, had this shoe for a couple of years. I ran a marathon 2022. I do struggle with sore feet in the Metaspeed Skies. Uh, not sure why, but anything over about 10K is when I'm getting those issues. So I have 194K, so almost 200K. Outsole is still looking really good. Midsole is still good. That carbon plate has still got a lot of responsiveness, kickback, and that's something that I did notice in the couple of park runs that I have done where I've opened the throttle a little bit. The upper is is fine. I guess it's like a lot of carbon plated shoes. It's not the most comfortable, but it does a specific purpose of uh, helping you out on race days. And uh, as I'm getting older, I need all the help I can get. The, when I think, hang on, let me see here. You can pick this shoe up at the moment for, hang on, I have to put my glasses on guys. Apologies. Uh, you can pick up the Metaspeed Sky Plus for about $230 at the moment. Pretty good value at that price, I do believe. The New Balance Fuel Cell RC Elite 2. Ah, this is my favorite, favorite, favorite race shoe. I've run a sub three hour marathon, a sub 85 minute half marathon. What are we at? 276 kilometers. A real solid race day shoe. And yeah, even though it's done 200 and almost 300 kilometers, Outsole looks really good. Midsole is still looking fantastic. And the upper has only one issue, is that my big toe is just starting to poke through the top. This is an issue that uh, a friend of mine, Graham, has had as well. It's no biggie for me. Compared to the Metaspeed Sky Plus, a much more comfortable shoe. Been a bang on shoe for me. Every time I've put this shoe on, I've run well. You could really feel the carbon plate helping you out. It's a, a fantastic shoe. At the moment, New Balances and Saucony are probably my two favorite brands for running shoes. The RC Elite 2s at the moment, you can still pick up for around about 200 bucks. And I think that is a steal. All right, guys, that is my shoe, current shoe rotation as it stands. 10 in the rotation, in fact, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's actually 11 that I've been using over the past few months, but obviously the Nova Blasters have now been retired. Let me know, guys, down in the comments if you use or have used any of these shoes in the past. Give me your thoughts and recommendations as well on whether you would buy them again. I'm getting close to the expiry date on some of those shoes and I'm gonna be in the market for some new shoes really soon. All right guys, thanks very much for watching this video. Really do appreciate it. Wherever you are, run well, run safe, be kind to each other and I'll catch you in the next run. Take care. Bye.